I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm extremely proud of what I've done here. We've got a four-story, fully playable, modular, redecoratable tower that we can play in in my D&D games, and I'm super psyched for it. It can be four stories, it can be two stories, it can be one stories, it can be three stories. And all the concepts are super simple, they just take a little bit of time. So I'll show you how to make this really easy and really impress your friends at your D&D table and give them the ultimate immersive tower battle experience. So we're gonna go over a lot of things really quickly today, so don't be afraid to pause the video and rewind for whatever you need. First thing we're gonna do is make a 12 inch by 12 inch base. As we go through a lot of these concepts, some of them are things that I've already done in previous videos, so I won't take too long on those, and other things, yeah, I'll take a little bit longer on. Luckily, this 12 inch by 12 inch base fits perfectly with my little mat here, lines right up on those white squares. Now we need to make the sides for the interior walls. All of my walls are about three-fourths of an inch thick so I kept that in mind for building most things now with three-fourths of an inch thick I need two different lengths one that's eight inches long because that's the interior length that I want and then another that is nine and a half inches long once I have both of those I can get a true box to shape now the ones that are nine and a half inches long I cut a little bit longer so that I can have extra because it's much easier to cut off extra than it is to add additional to something that's too short. So the second little white box I have on my mat is perfectly eight inches square, so that's what I kind of use to line things up and make sure they work. Now we're gonna be zoomed out for a lot of this video because my buddy Charles Wolf and I are working on the beginning of this together. You can check him out, he's Impulsive Artistry. We've done some stuff together before, but he's helping me kind of design and build the base of it before we really get going. I do my fit here with some hot glue and I cut off the extra little end pieces here so that it it is a perfect box and you don't have any of that extra little tail pieces hanging off. Now I wanted some extra stone decoration that looks like it's helping hold the pillar up so we made some two inch by one inch blocks here and then from those blocks we marked diagonally from one corner to another giving us a perfect 30 60 90 style triangle. Cut those out freehand on the proxon. Freehand makes it look a little bit more stone like. It doesn't have to be exact and we're going to use those again to make a little bit more decoration. So I line it up while Charles is texturing the bottom of that. He's also made a grid system go across so that we can use that when playing. Hot glue it and bam, you can see the grid system and the textured bottom there. From there we glue those, not really crenellations, but more just support structures for the stone that is going off the side. I'm doing that while he's texturing those up over on the side, and then we can move on to our Black Magic Craft Mod Podge Black Paint Mixture. Now it's just Mod Podge and Black Paint, but I learned it from Black Magic Crafts and he's kind of coined using it, so I don't want to say like, I did it and this is me, I learned this thing. But what it is, is a base coat of black so that any mistakes you made are hidden just by blackness and Mod Podge to kind of turn your foam into a little bit sturdier of a material. Now I hit it with a hairdryer to dry this a little bit quicker so that I can continue working on it throughout the night. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more close up version of what I just did uh, so that you can understand kind of the math behind what I was doing. So this is one of the other floors. It's textured to look like stone just by rolling an aluminum foil ball over it, as well as we've put an eight by eight, one inch grid system on it. So we take these nine and a half inch walls, place them down with hot glue. Same thing with the eight inch walls, put both eight inch walls up and then put the final nine and a half inch one up. Bam, you're done. Now the bottom plate there is actually mm, about nine inches instead of the full nine and a half inches that it needs to be. We're leaving a little bit extra because we're gonna put some wood decoration on there. So you can see even from the bottom of these, yeah, there's some hangover from the walls, but we want that, it's intentional. So I do that, I go ahead and Mod Podge that up. You don't have to do the bottom, but I figured I would, that way I can just see black instead of green paint. Now that we've got all of our floors Mod Podged up, it's time to do just a little bit of touch up on the Proxon. Now, everything that we do here, you can do with a knife. In fact, some of the stuff we do do with a knife, like creating out the bottoms, but I wanted to do a little bit of 
touch up and I have a Brox on, so why not use it? But now we need to create the interlocking system so that these can sit on top of each other without falling off as soon as somebody accidentally bumps it during gameplay, right? And we decided that this would be done extremely simply by just taking some 3 fourths by 3 fourths inch blocks and gluing four of them to the underside of the platforms because then they'll lock into the corners, they're not too big to where they're intrusive and you can't place things inside of there ahead of time and it'll work perfectly. So I take some tape and I kind of roll it up so that it's double sided tape and I put those on the bottom where I think will fit and this just becomes trial and error. I place it on, okay that doesn't fit, doesn't work for me, I need to slide these back over pull the tape back up, slide them a little bit, adjust them. Okay, now this fits, but it's a little bit too loose. You can see here it's sliding all over the place. Let's adjust it one more time, place it in, and bam, that's exactly what we're looking for. Very little wiggle, and then all you gotta do is pull them to the side, take the tape off, put some hot glue under there, set it back down, and boom. Once the glue is dry, they're set and good to go. Uh, I'm gonna test it by placing it on one of these here, but then I also place it on the other ones and I place it sideways so that we can make sure that it fits in all of them because they're not all gonna line up right, I'm just not that precise. Now I'm gonna start working on the roof. I'm working on the roof and Charles is painting everything gray in the background, which turns out to be a bad idea, but I'll explain that a little bit later. And I'm doing a little bit of math to figure out exactly what size the kind of corner slants need to be on the roof, and I come up with about eight and a half inches to get the angle that I want. Uh, it gives me so that they line up perfectly right in the middle. I'm using just some cheap dollar store little foam here where I peel the little paper on the back off of it so you can see it's white instead of black now. And then I'm just gonna take a bunch of hot glue, line it up, and you can pretty much do it at a 90 degree angle on there and you get a perfect little cut. Now I want my roof to hang over just a little bit so it's a little outside of that kind of nine and a half inch range, but that's good. It's easy to line up to this foam right here cut out small little triangles because a straight line gets me exactly where I want it to be and I do a little test fit. Great, it sits on the front and back and it hides everything else that I don't want. From doing those angles, it leaves two extra angles for me to cut off two more triangles. So now I have four, which leaves a little bit more structure in the middle. You can see I moved to the back up there while Charles is cutting out some stuff on the Proxon. I'm texturing the kind of triangles that will be the stonework that this sits on and I'm setting the other ones up. Charles is cutting out what is going to be the wood for a lot of our project later that he'll be wood graining. I'm hot gluing this down to the back over there, the front one and the back one. Then I'm also hot gluing down the middle pieces and they all kind of line up straight right down the center and then all I got to do is cover them in hot glue and you got to work quick on this one because hot glue starts drying pretty quick. So load up your hot glue gun and then immediately set your roof on there. And hopefully you set it right the first time and you don't see me not film the part where I messed up and had to do it again. Then I started mod podging it while Charles is doing wood grain texturing on the bottom. Now a lot of the things he's making out of wood include the door and all the panels and for the door he's making a two inch by one inch door that he cuts two really thin pieces out of and everything else he just has our standard kind of three fourths inch thick thing that he's cutting into extremely thin strips that from those strips he will take a pencil and just run it along the length of it not trying to be particularly straight but gouging into it with the pencil giving it that wood grain textured style now before I said that there was an issue with us putting the paint on before and that comes in now so thanks Charles for helping with that beginning but I'll take it from here so you can see it was dumb to put the gray thing on because everything else that we're gonna put on I'm going to Mod Podge paint after we put it on it's just easier because I didn't really have a vision for where I wanted to go so I put a ton of hot glue down and just start laying the wood down and I want this to look like it's helping support the stone I leave a little bit of wood over the edges put more hot glue down and line the next bit of wood up to that edge and you can see it starts to look more and more like okay these are floors instead of just one continuous piece of stone as you put the wood down. I take a knife, cut the rest of the excess wood off flush so that it sits nice and flat, put more hot glue down, put the last piece of wood on, cut that end off and bam we've got one of the floors done. I test it to make sure that it lines up properly to the next one which hey hallelujah it does. That's fantastic we wanted to see very little wiggle and we still continue to see very little wiggle. I do this for two more floors for the top three floors. Now you know you don't have to do this for the bottom one because there's no wood for it to connect to so just do it for the top ones and now one thing you may still want to do for the bottom but again you don't need to if you did those kind of corner 
crenellation support pieces is take some wood and cover up the seams. The seams can show a lot of hot glue or really show that this is not one large continuous slab of stone, which is not what I was going for. So I put the wood and used it to cover that up. There's a lot of excess wood on the top. Just cut that flush so that it looks like it was meant to be there and then I'm not just a lazy crafter and we're good to go. From there, you can really start just accenting all of the stone with all the wood that you want. Now I'm starting to line up the door pieces. I take two, find the center point and just kind of place those to the left and to the right of the center point hot glue those down all over to make sure that they don't ever come up and then I do kind of a little decorative holder for the door so it doesn't look like it just goes right into the stone now we're gonna work on the pebble walkway or a little slab stone walkway all I did was really tear off a bunch of small thin foam I had some pink one already done so I didn't do it on green there's no difference between the pink and the green and I lay those down right in front of the doorway there I start using a couple quarter inch by quarter inch long little strips of almost like logs and I cut them into two inch strips I have a piece of pink scrap foam and a kind of pillar piece of green scrap foam that I use to have consistent height and width away from the walls so that they all look similar on the front and the back and I make little boxes inside the boxes I put support pillars or logs one going up straightened down and one going from the left to the right and it gives that kind of cross section that looks like an old school window now that's the bottom I'm done with the bottom and I just start kind of mirroring this and just going with whatever patterns I feel are necessary on the next floors and I really try and swap it up I want them to all be pretty different so that I can use them modularly and make it look like a different house every time I do it but now I don't know if you'll notice that's a new camera right there I got a new camera about halfway through this and with that I'm gonna start being able to record 4k videos so kind of excited about that but now we're making some more really thin scraps with those thin scraps we're going to make kind of a clay roofing tile so we texture them to be like stone rather than like wood we lay a bunch of them on top of each other and cut them off in varying lengths from quarter inch to half inch to three-fourths of an inch so that we have a bunch of different sized tiles because we're going to begin the roofing process the roof is about eight and a half inches wide I mark off one inch spot so that we can get something consistent and I use tacky glue it sets up a little bit faster than normal Elmer's glue but it's not too quick like hot glue would be and I just start laying them down start laying down tile one after the other all the way across the bottom but on the next layer I put some of the glue on top of the previous tiles because I want them to lay and look like they're layered instead of just sitting on there for no reason right and that's how tile works it doesn't just sit there water would begin to pool so I do that for the entirety of the roof do layer after layer after layer until one side is done and then I do the same thing on the other side it dries pretty quickly now I'm doing the central roofing tiles which I just find some really flexible thin pieces of foam and hot glue those down I'm gonna do this in two layers so I set the first one down and just layer them one over the other over the other till I have a single one right in the center texture those with the foil ball so that they mimic the stone kind of clay tiles of the other ones and do another little set here so that it honestly just looks a little bit better now we're done with all the detail parts all of the wood and all the stone is there where we want it to be so we begin mod podging over everything so that it's all safe and good to go and not gonna hurt itself this is why again I said don't paint or Mod Podge this ahead of time. It was just a waste of time. But now everything's painted. I don't have enough time in this video to show all that, but the wood becomes brown, the stone becomes gray, the inside of the windows becomes black, and the little pebbles out front and the stone walkway is a light tan. But now I'm taking some clear Elmer's glue and coating the bottom of the base floor with it. I take a little brush, go all over it, pour some of this coarse turf over it so that it looks like grass, tap a bunch off and repeat all the way around I wanted this to look like it came straight out of the meadow and that the bottom is this living breathing place so I take a bunch of glue do that and put the coarse turf on it now I take a small brush and I brush a ton of the glue in between all of the cracks of the small little stepping stones there it takes a little bit but it's worth it because now I can just throw some more of that coarse grass over it let it sit for maybe a minute or two so that it'll stick on there tap it off Call it good. I brushed a little bit off just in case so that there wasn't any extra grass sitting on top. And bam, that was done. I was really, really happy with that. And we can begin the fun part, at least my favorite part, which is the dry brushing. I take a light tan and go over everything. And I go over the stone 
hard. I really like the tan dry brush more than I do the gray on stone. I think it makes it pop, so I hit everything with this, including the stone on the roof. After the tan dry brush, I move on to a light gray. Now the light gray I also do on the red kind of clay tiles that I did for the roof. I had some interspersed other colors on the roof, but it was mostly red, so light gray fitted a bit better. And then I hit the rest of the stone, and then I take a really, really light brown and go over all the wood so that it has some highlights. And one thing that I didn't say before, I put a wash over everything before I did any of the dry brushing. I just, that's kind of assumed. But I am also using the wash to make some water run marks on the roof. You can put those on there to make it look like this is where the water tends to run on the roof without having to do any crazy detailed painting and it will come off really nice looking. Last bit of dry brushing I do is take a little bit more of that gray and go over the stepping stone walkways. Now for the brass doorknobs I have some extra leather rivets. I've used them before, they work perfect. I poke little holes with the pen right where I want them to be as doorknobs onto the wood doors, put some hot glue in there so that they'll stick, and bam! We're freaking done! I am so happy with this! It's my first large-scale project, one, that actually works, and two, that I can put on the channel and say, look, I did something that I am proud of. Now, let's take a look at the interior, because we haven't taken a great look into that before. So take the roof off, and bam! I filled it with the portals, which you can check out that video if you haven't seen that one before. I also filled it with just some random junk I have, with little figures, and bam, there's one floor. The next one is the little fire effect floor, like he's guarding some sort of ancient an artifact and this one's the base level floor where I've got books and libraries and you know what man if I don't want it to look like that how about I just have a little inn here's a large inn that now works perfectly it doesn't have to be the stall tower or you know what maybe there's a two-story inn. I can put that in here or this is just a single portal or a witch's home that has portals it doesn't matter I wanted this to be modular it is if I want to change the roof out it takes no time at all maybe really a day honestly if I wanted to make a new roof to make this look more castle like I could throw a dragon on there and now it's under attack and they have to defend it right trees add to it I am extremely happy I may add some more realistic grass tufts or flowers to it in the end. You know what, man? I'm happy with this. The trees are enough for it. it. It's totally playable. It fits right in that kind of 12 by 12 grid that I have currently for my battle mat. I can swap it right out. So thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you're not already to the channel. Maybe share this video if you want. I would love to see that. Tell me what you think down in the comments. I love talking to people and I hope you have a great day.